Hello students, through this video, we will cover the experiment number 7 for the subject power system analysis. Title of the experiment number 7 is study of pyramid system by using MATLAB software. Till now, during the theoretical lectures, we had discussed that for the power system analysis purpose, we use the different softwares like ETAP software, MATLAB software, then ANSYS Maxwell software, etc. Through this experiment, we will study the use of MATLAB software for the calculation of per unit system. So, till now, during the lecture, also we had discussed that per unit system is useful for the power system analysis, that is, for fault, uh, fault analysis purpose, then to decide the power system stability, then for load flow analysis, etc. Because it is having several advantages. Like in case of the per unit system, the total calculation time required is less. Then impedance or reactance on primary as well as secondary side of the transformer is equal. Also, there is main advantage is that there is no confusion of line and phase values in case of the three phase system. So through this experiment, actually we will solve one miracle theoretically for calculation of per unit system. And after that, we will analyze the same miracle by using the MATLAB software. In this case, we will consider the simple system in which one generator is connected to the loads that is motor 1, M1 and M2 through the two different transformers. And here we have to calculate the, we have to use the current system for calculation of different parameters. So what is the task given? A one line diagram of the three phase power system is shown in figure. Here, the, regarding the base values, they are given the content that it is 20 kV the generator voltage as the base voltage and 100 mV as the base P. Calculate all values of the reactances in per unit. So through the theoretical lecture, we had already discussed whenever we are going to do, deal with the per unit calculation, at that time there is a requirement of selecting the base value of voltage as well as base value of the power. This base value of the voltage will changes as per the transformer ratio whereas base value of the power remains same throughout the system. So for this numerical they had already given we have to select the base value of the voltage as 20 kV whereas base value of the power as 100 mV. So what we will do, we will calculate the step by step reactors for reactors for the generator, transformer, transmission line and load. So first of all, for calculation of the per unit reactance of the generator, we are having the basic formula Z2 per unit is equal to Z1 per unit into SB2 upon SB1 into VB1 upon VB2 bracket square. Here SB2 is nothing but new value of the base power, whereas SB1 is nothing but the original value of the base power. And here VB2 is new base value of the voltage, whereas VB1 is the old or original value of the base voltage. So in this case, since the base value of the power is 100 mV, which is similar to the uh, uh, old value for the reactors of the generator, as well as base value of the voltage is similar to the new base value. So the formula will be 0. Point, the value will be 0.10 into 100 upon 100 into 20 upon 20 bracket square. That is 0. 0.1 is the current value of the reactors for the generator. That is new value of the gen generator reactors as per the base value 20 kV base value of the voltage 20 kV and base value of the power 100 mV. Now for calculation of the reactance on the primary side of the transformer, if you go through the diagram, on primary side the base value of the voltage and base value of the power will remain same. So here again we have to use the same formula and new value of the transformer reactance is 0 0.15 into 100 upon 150. Here 150 is the original value of the base power but as per the consideration for this numerical, we have to change this base value to the 100. So SB2 is 100 and SB1 is 150 into 20 upon 20 bracket square that is 0 0.1 per unit is the reactance for the transformer P1. Similarly, for secondary side of the transformer, we are having the idea that as, as per the transformer ratio, base value of the voltage changes. But here, ratio of the transformer is 20 by 110 that is on secondary side, the, as per the transformer ratio, base value of the voltage is also changes. That, that is, it will become 20 into 110 upon 20, that is 110 kV. That is, base value of the voltage on the secondary side of the transformer is 110 kV. 
Whereas base value of the power will remain same. Now the base voltage in motor circuit is determined with 110 kV applied to the primary of the transformer T2. So base voltage in the motor circuit is base voltage on the secondary side of the transformer T2 that is 110 into 20 upon 63.5 into root 3 that is 20 kV will be the base value of the voltage for the motor that is load which is connected on the system. Then for calculation of the per unit reactance of the transformer T2 this base voltage on the LV side is of the transformer T2 is 34.65 kV which will become so we will calculate the value of the reactance of the transformer T2 is J0.19 into 100 upon 120 into root 3 into 63.5 upon 110 bracket square that is 0.1583 per unit that is we had calculated the base uh, parent value of the parent value of the reactance for the generator then parent reactance value of the transformer T1 and now we will calculate the parent reactance of the trans, trans, uh, reactance of the transmission line so base voltage on the LB side of the uh, sorry for trans, uh, transmission line it will be 72 into 0.9 here 72 is the length of the line and 0.9 is the reactance per kilometer so total reactance is 72 into 0.9 into 100 upon 110 bracket square so it will become 0 0.5355 per unit so this is the current reactance of the transmission line now for calculation of the current reactance of the motor M1 we are having the formula X, XM per unit here original reactance J0.12 into 100 upon 100 because base value of the power will uh, same it will be 100 MV into 20 upon 20 bracket square so 0.12 per unit is the current reactance for the motor M1 now for current reactance for the motor M2 the, again the formula will be same but here original or old reactance value of the motor M2 is 0.16 so it will be J0.16 into 100 upon 120 into 18 upon 20 bracket square here 18 is the uh, old or original base value of the voltage whereas 20 is the new base value of the voltage for per unit calculation so that reactance will be 0 0.1080 thus we had calculated for this diagram by selecting the base value of the voltage 20 kV and by selecting the base value of the power 100 MV as per the as per the given data from the example we had calculated the per unit reactance for the generator per unit reactance for the transformer T1, T2 then per unit reactance for the transmission line as well as per unit reactance for the motor M1 and M2 so this is the theoretical procedure actually we had solved many examples based on the per unit system through the uh, during the lecture hours also but the main task of the today's experiment is we have to consider uh, we have to study the use of MATLAB software for calculation of per unit values. So this is the one MATLAB program where CLC is nothing but clear data then a display generator MVG input here we have to give the input value of the enter the MV value of the generator that is rating of the generator then KVG input is the enter KV value of the generator XG input enter the reactance value of the generator that is up to this step we have to give the input value of the the uh, ratings of the generator that is in term of the MV, KV and reactance value. Now for giving, uh, providing the transformer values as input data, MVAT1 is nothing but MV value of the transformer 1, KVT1P where P speaks represent the primary side of the transformer, here we have to enter the primary KV value of the transformer 1, KVT1S where enter the secondary KV value of the transformer and XT1 which represent the reactance value of the transformer 1. Similarly, we have to do the input of, uh, for the transmission line also. Here LTR is nothing but enter the length of the transmission line. Because in this example, they had given the reactance value per kilometer of the line. Then XTR is the enter the reactance value of the transmission line. Similarly, for input data from the transformer T2, KV MVA T2 represent the MVA value of the transformer T2 KV2 KV T2 P which represent the primary KV value of the transformer 2 KV T2 S represent the secondary KV value of the transformer 2 XT2 where it represent the reactance value of the transformer 2 then for input value from the motor 1 KV M1 represent the MVA value of the motor 1 KV M1 represent the KV value of the motor 1, 
Xm1 represents the reactance value of the motor 1. Similarly, the values as input data for the motor 2 repre represented by MvM2, KvM2 and Xm2. Then we need to give the base value as input for the uh, MATLAB software where MvB represents the base value of the power, KvB represents the base value of the voltage. Then according to the formulas which we had already discussed during the theoretical calculation, the formulas are given for calculation of the reactances as per the selected base value of the voltage and selected base value of the power that is Xg new, then Xt1 new, Kvb new, Xtr new, Xt2 new, Kvb new 1, Xm, uh, Xm1 new, Xm2 new that is by using this formula we will get the output data that is current values of the reactances for generator, transmission line, both transformers as well as for both motors. So, this is the program. Now, we have to analyze this program with the help of the MATLAB software. Actually, I had, I had already written this program and I am having that M file. I will directly open that M file to reduce the time. Actually, for reducing the time, I am uh, going to open this written file directly. But students are expected that they have to write this program on, uh, in the M file uh, by using the MATLAB software. And you have to run this program to find out the output. So, if you go through the program, it is clear that this is the program which we had already discussed. That is, we have to give the input value of the generator, transformer, transmission line, motor 1, motor 2. Then, I will run the program. Then, it will ask for the input data as per the current program. So, we have to refer the input data also from the uh, given data of the example. So when we will run the program, you can see that it will ask for the enter the MVLA of the generator. So uh, for selected or for discussed numerical, the MVLA of the generator is 100 MV that is base value of the uh, sorry uh, MVLA of the generator. Then KV value of the generator is 20 KV. Then reactance as per the given data is 0 0.1 for the generator. Then it will ask as input data for the transformer rating. Enter the MVLA of the transformer 1 which is 150 MV. Then it will ask for the primary KVL of the transformer. Since the ratio of the transformer is 20 by 110. So primary value of the voltage is 20 KV. Then secondary voltage is 110. Then reactance as per the given data is 0.15. Then it will ask for the input data from the transmission line. So it will uh, ask for the enter the length of the transmission line. So it is 72 kilometer. Then reactance of the transmission line is 0.9. Then it will ask as an input data for the transformer 2. Here MVL of the transformer 2 is 120 MV. Then primary KV of the transformer is 63.5. Then secondary KV of the transformer T2 is 20 kV and reactance value of the transformer 2 is 0 0.19. You can refer the diagram also for the given data. Then for the motor M1, the M value of the motor 1 is 100 because base value of the power is same. Then 
KV value of the motor is 20 KV and reactance is, as per the given data is 0.12. Then for similarly as the input data for the motor 2, M value of the motor 2 is 120, then KV value of the motor is 18 and reactance given is 0.16. That is till now we had completed all the required input data for the program. Now, when we will run this program, there, there, uh, there is a requirement of, you know, when we will run this program, it will give the parent values. But we know that for a select calculation of the parent value, there is a requirement of base value of the power as, as well as base value of the voltage. So for this numerical, we had to consider base value of the power as 100 MV and base value of the voltage is 20 kV. So when I will press the enter button, you can see on the screen that all the values which we had calculated earlier will get directly by using the MATLAB software. That is all the parent values we had uh, received as output from the MATLAB program. So what is the use of this MATLAB program? Here suppose we change the base value of the voltage or base value of the power, then I, I need to repeat all the calculation. So calculation time required is more. But through the MATLAB software, just I have to change the base value of the power and base value of the voltage as input data here and it will directly give the uh, new parent values as per the new base value of, uh, base values of the voltage as well as base value of the power. That means calculation time required is less by using the MATLAB software. Also, we, uh, we know that in case of the power system analysis, actually we have to deal with the num uh, number of buses and at that time the total uh, calculation time is more. So if we use the software then analysis time or calculation time is less and that's why the total time required for the power system analysis is less and hence the MATLAB software is prepared for the power system analysis purpose. So what is expected now for the completing this experiment actually you have to give the title of the experiment as study of the parent system by using the MATLAB software then you have to write down this program and you have to theoretically solve this entire program. Once you calculate all the parent values theoretically then through the MATLAB program you have to write, give, uh, write this MATLAB program in the MATLAB software through the M file then you have to give the input data as per the selected example and you have to find out the output and up, once the analysis is done by using the MATLAB software, you have to correlate the input data, uh, data which is uh, which you will get uh, you get uh, theoretically as well as by the software analysis. And if both data are correct or they are similar, then we can say that the MATLAB software is beneficial or it is having advantages in case of the power system analysis. So this is the conclusion of the experiment is that we can use the MATLAB software for the power system analysis purpose and this software is having the advantage that it will reduce the calculation time as well as whenever it is user friendly that is whenever we change the base value of the voltage or base value of the power then also the total calculation time required is less and hence the MATLAB software is useful for the power system analysis and through this experiment we had seen the one example use of, uh, that use of MATLAB software for the calculation of per unit system. Thank you.